Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another Armored Warfare replay. I am your host, Bjorn, and today I have for you myself and four of my battalion members. Uh, we are the 103rd uh, Irregulars. What we have here is we have Ga uh, Godzilla. <laughs> I can't even pronounce that right. With the T-14-152 Armada, uh, myself in the XM-3A1, uh, Sneedy with the Wilk XZ-5, uh, Rexall with the Challenger 2, and David Bowie with the Merkava Mark IV. Uh, this is Operation Snakebite, and this is PvE Hardcore, because we play hardcore all the time. Anyway, so... I'm not really going to talk so much about the XM-1A3 in this match, um, as there's really no history to the vehicle. The vehicle ha is not even in production yet. Um, there is prototypes, and they are being tested. Um, the big pro the big snafu right now is the uh, main gun. Um, the military is looking at various different uh, main guns, uh, including a thermokinetic gun. Uh, which is kind of a hybrid between a railgun and a standard kinetic gun. Uh, a, a, a different 120 millimeter gun, a 140 millimeter gun, a 130 millimeter gun. Um, I'm actually going to talk about guns here, guns and ammunition, because understand is why there's a lot of people think that they're either going to go with the 140. Uh, there's quite a few out there that thinks they're going to stick with the 120 and I lean heavily to the they're going to stick with the 120 millimeter gun and I'm going to explain why here shortly. Um, let's start off with the fact that the 120 millimeter na main gun among NATO allies is a NATO standard. Um, and I'll get into that in a while here, but um, so the thing to understand is that if going to 140 millimeter from 120 millimeter is going to be a very difficult process and it's not as simple as just switching ammunition um first off 140 millimeter is heavier than 120 millimeter uh just the gun in itself it's a longer the the gun they proposed it's a longer gun it's a heavier the the breach is going to be heavier it's going to add weight to the tank it's also going to take crew space inside the tank and historically speaking uh, America's really always leaned towards giving a shit about their crew comfort. Understand that when you're in this tank, when you're in a tank, you're in a tank for a long period of time. And you want your crew to be able to fight at the, the most top shape possible. Um, so there's that. Crew comfort becomes a factor. Um, ammunition count becomes a factor. 120 millimeter round obviously takes up more space than, or sorry, 140 millimeter round obviously takes more space than 120 millimeter round, which means you're going to have a lower ammunition count. It also means it's going to be harder to load the rounds. Another thing that becomes a problem. Um, uh, the, the shells are heavier, which means it's going to be slower and harder to load the main gun. Understand there's there's not a whole lot of space inside the tank as it is to ho load the 120 millimeter gun. Crew fatigue and crew strength becomes a problem. Um, by switching to a heavier round, obviously your loader will become fatigued much quicker. Now, that being said, we could also go to a conveyor type uh, semi-automatic loading system which is something like that was in the IS-7 but obviously more advanced or we can go to an automatic loader once again the US military doesn't like that idea uh, it's a lot of a lot of things to consider there uh, one is maintenance um, one is complexity of parts um, you know there's a lot of things to consider when going to auto loaders and, and things of that nature um, the other thing that becomes a problem is logistics. Oh my God, that dirty L word. Yes, I said logistics. The reason logistics is important in warfare, logistics is one of the most important key factors and it's actually the most commonly overlooked uh, factor of warfare. Um, you gotta understand um, 
when it comes logistics is your crew supplies your ammunition things of that nature we went to well a lot of countries not all countries have gone to a nato standard and the reason a lot of countries uses that nato standard is because we can share supplies so our german out in a war zone uh if we run short of 120 millimeter ammunition we can go to our german allies and say we need 120 millimeter ammunition and maybe work out some kind of trade system uh understand that the 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 m1 abrams also uses a multi-fuel uh turbine engine which means it can burn anything diesel fuel uh most commonly used by our nato allies is diesel engines and obviously if you have a multi-fuel engine diesel becomes a factor with that uh, with a multi-fuel engine so that's that's the big thing about logistics being able to share supplies it's why uh, if you look around a lot of assault rifles and combat rifles fires 556 ammunition or 762 and most commonly you're going to find 556 because 556 is the standard nato combat round rifle round um same way nine millimeter commonly nine millimeters used as a sidearm and submachine gun caliber because the nine millimeter parabellum is the nato standard ammunition um if we switch to 140 millimeter round and none of our other allies switch to a 140 millimeter round um you know if we're the only ones using 140 millimeter ammunition um that breaks the nato standard and suddenly we can't get supply from nato allies if absolutely need be and vice versa they won't be able to switch take supplies from us um the other thing to consider is is when xm1 a3 we'll just call it a3 when a3 finally enters service which understand XM1A3 has been talked about since I enlisted in the service in 2003. Um, and they're still discussing, as you can hear today, we're still discussing XM1A3 as it's still in prototype stage. Um, but understand that M1A1, which will be armed with a 120 millimeter gun, and M1A3, which will still also be armed with a 120 millimeter gun, will still be in standard service with the U.S. military, which also compl complicates logistics. Because obviously, if those tanks are still using 120 millimeter ammunition, tank crews won't be able to share ammunition. Um, that being said, we're gonna I'm gonna more or less wrap up that whole discussion there. Um, that it's a topic I can discuss more about, but I just I honestly don't have time. But what we have here in Armored Warfare with the A3 is a tier 10 main battle tank. Um, it's not a bad tank, nor would I say it's a great tank. Uh, I do like the tank. I do see the weaknesses in the tank, but I still have a bit of bias with the M1s. Um, now there's a 140 millimeter gun which you can which you can mount on the uh a3 uh it's a very powerful gun if you want to shoot heat ammunition uh but if you want a hard kicking 120 millimeter uh anti-tank gun this is the way to go the armor piercing ammunition actually has uh higher penetration um as you can see uh it's got a pretty rapid rate of fire and actually it can double tap as it's a ready rack based weapon of two shot capability um it does fire a decent heat round but it's not the most powerful heat round obviously it loses out to the 140 millimeter main guns of other tanks uh, okay as you can see we got a win here so i'm going to pull up the results and i'll talk a little bit more about the tank at tier 10 um but so what what I went with, I went with the 120 millimeter gun. It's got to do with the reload time. If I miss a shot, I can quickly, I can back off and quickly re-engage target uh, with the 120 millimeter gun versus the 140 millimeter gun. Um, I, it's got better accuracy. It's got a better rate of fire, as I said. And it's got better gun handling, which includes the stabilization, such as firing on the move. 
Um, the snapshot capability is much better with the the 120 millimeter gun. Um, I just I favor the 120 millimeter gun. Obviously, my tank also has a higher ammunition count, which obviously I'm also going to have to fire uh, more ammunition with the 120 than I would with the 140 because 140 wins out with damage. But honestly, the 120 wins with me. It wins everywhere else. That the 140 just fails. I'm not saying the 140 is not a bad gun. Um, but if I'm going to roll out into PvP, which I've actually done a little bit of PvP in this tank, um, yeah, you definitely want to, I would say you want to rock out the 100 and 120 millimeter gun. It's, it's just the better anti-tank gun. Okay, so what we have here, we have a little bit over 23,000 damage with 12 enemy vehicles spotted and five destroyed. And I grabbed myself a blue star. Um, understand that my team is actually my battalion is mostly pretty competent, and we all did fairly well with three of us actually going over, or sorry, with two of us going over 20,000 damage and everybody else near 15,000 plus. Um, so it was a good game with everybody. It was, as I said, it's PvE hardcore, and it was a tier 10, for the most part, tier 10 match. Uh, so there you go. Uh, top damage overall. And hopefully you enjoyed this uh, discussion. Uh, I would say this replay of featuring the XM1A3, but more of the discussion of going from 120 versus 140 millimeter ammunition. And as I said, I can discuss more about it. If you'd like to hear more about that discussion, please comment in the video below. Also, if you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and get yourself the uh, hit that notification bell so you know when I upload more videos. Um, I definitely been really, really enjoying doing armored warfare content through uh, through Twitch and YouTube here, and definitely would like some more. And and also, if you have feedback, you know, please uh, feel more than free to give the video feedback. Um, anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you all again sometime.